Okay, students. So now in this, uh, we will see a one very famous problem, uh, and this problem is tricky also, uh, but we will try to solve it in a systematic way. And if you have understood this problem, and if you try to solve this problem on your own, I think major normalization problems uh, would be understood at your end, and major, uh, you know, the normalization problem you would be able to solve. So take this problem seriously. This is a very famous problem. Uh, and it is it has appeared in many examination also so simple the statement problem statement is very simple decompose the given relation with set of functional dependency into b c and f so when this kind of a problem is given uh, mostly you will have a candidate key also uh, in, a, in a problem itself so no need to compute the candidate key but uh, as a caution i would suggest you okay, always verify the candidate key always verify the candidate key so given a candidate key is a b so first i would verify the candidate key so how can i verify obviously with closure set of attributes so a b is giving a b and then a b uh, is giving c also and b is giving d also and d is giving e also right students so the uh, given candidate key is correct right so it is giving all the attributes so now we can compute the prime attributes so what are prime attributes in this case only a b are the prime attributes now non prime attributes if you try to find out so it would be what remaining attributes that means c d and e okay so now uh, you can go for the check for the partial dependency because first we would go for the uh, 2nf and you can check for the transitive dependency also later on we, we would give the treatment of for the transitive dependency also uh, and carefully see each and every step in this problem you will find somewhere you know uh, some interesting facts in this problem so uh, first thing is ab is uh, determining c ab is determining c so AB itself is a candidate key and it is a complete candidate key, complete candidate key, right, student? So it cannot be a partial dependency and it cannot be a transitive dependency. So this is not a problem for us. This partial, so, sorry, this functional dependency is not a problem. But here, if you see straight away, B is a part of candidate key and D is what? Non-prime attribute. So this is a problem for us this is a problem for us and what kind of a problem for us it's a partial dependency so it's not in 2nf the given relation is already in 1nf it's not even in 2nf so sometimes the questions are twisted also and they would ask okay, which what is the highest normal form it is satisfying so in this case you have to write only 1nf okay but it's decomposing so we'll go one step for, further but what about this uh, dependency non-prime attribute is determining non-prime attribute again there is a problem so for third normal form also it is having some kind of a virus so we have to give a treatment to these problems partial dependency and transitive dependency from where we can start always start for the second normal form that means always start from the partial dependency so how uh, you uh, decompose the relation so you decompose this way are a b c d and e five attributes are there and first problem is what b plus which is giving what b and it is giving d and it is giving d also right students all of you can see that it's giving b and it's giving d and it's giving e also so we have to uh, actually remove b we have to remove d and we have to remove e and i would write here and this relation i would call it r2 uh, you can make any uh, you can give any name it's just my habit so i'm just calling it r2 so b d and e you can make and how many attributes are remaining uh, two attributes are remaining one is a and another is c 
and what about the common attribute common attribute can be the candidate key only so here you can write it b okay just in a serial order so this is a first relation r1 which is having a b c and this relation is r2 which is having b d and e so you have successfully given a treatment for what partial dependency but remember one thing you have to note it down all the functional dependency here right so a b is determining c this functional dependency you have to write here a b is determining c so a b is determining c what about the other functional dependencies so b is determining d and d is determining what e so it is similar to the earlier problem that we have solved but you would see some interesting fact in that also so b is determining d and d is determining e here is the problem once again students the problem is in d is determining e transitive dependency because we have seen that non prime attribute is determining non prime attribute so how can you further uh, uh, you know break down this relation you can break down this relation uh, by computing d plus and d this d plus will give you what uh, uh, d as well as e right so now you have a relation r22 in which d and e would be there d and e would be there so you have to cut d and e carefully uh, see okay so uh, i'm switching from here and there so you, you you do not need to lose your focus it's a big problem it's a major problem in this so d and e you put it here and then r you can call it 2 1 what is remaining b is remaining and what is the common attribute you are taking d so you have given a treatment to the transitive dependency also so here uh, if, if you want so i am making a space here and i'm just writing the final relations so this is a final relation r1 a b and c then i have another relation r21 which is having d e and d then i have another relation r22 which is having what d e and e i'm making a space so pardon me uh, for the poor space management but still the problem is going to solve so r1 abc which functional dependency you have to write ab is determining c and r21 b is determining what d and what about this r2 so you Uh, delete this and you write d is determining what e right so all the functional dependencies are there students yes one is covered second is covered and third is covered the given decomposition is in 3 nf if it is in 3 nf so obviously you can go further for bcnf also what is the requirement for the bcnf all of these determinant must be super keys so ab is a super key yes ab is a super key in this sub relation because ab is giving you what a b is giving you what abc so it is a super key moreover it's not a partial dependency moreover it's not a transitive dependency so this is in bcnf bcnf it satisfy the criteria for the bcnf coming here b is a candidate key because b is determining b and d just you have to see the sub relation and similarly you have to see this sub relation so d is determining e so this is also in bcnf because d is forming what a candidate key so it is in 1nf 2nf 3nf and bcnf entirely if all the sub relations are in bcnf then the decomposition you can call it is in bcnf right students so please note the, this problem carefully and try to solve it on your own take a screenshot of this problem and try to solve on your own once you solve this problem finally check the results okay, whether you are obtaining this results or not okay one more validation you can do you put some you know a data which is satisfying the functional dependency and you can take the natural join also just to uh, strengthen your answer okay, whether you have done a proper decomposition or not so this is about what a bcnf student and uh Uh, once again i'm just in two uh, minutes i'm trying to uh, give you what we are doing actually in normalization so normalization is a lengthy process and lengthy process but it is a systematic process so step by step process you always start with the input input is a relation right and it may have obviously it would have redundancy and inconsistency 
inconsistency so continuously or consecutively you have to apply filters right? so it's like a filtration process um, i don't know how many of you have seen the water water filtration process so there is ro there is uv process and there is some other like uh, alkaline process so a lot of filters are put in a water treatment plant likewise we are treating what are relations right so these are the filters first filter second filter third filter and fourth filter fourth filter so if you have passed or if you have uh, uh, you know put your relation in all these filters the output would be what there is a high chance that your uh, relation is redundancy free and inconsistency free after that there are more normal forms also like 4nf and the dknf but they are for the research purpose practically in all the industries we always go up to bcnf after that we don't go because most of the treatments are done in this for example multi value attributes we are removing here composite attributes we are removing here so there is you know most unlikely you will have a multi valued dependency in rarest of the rare cases you would have that but in literature it is there in research it is there but in industry we have to go up to bcnf only then just a summarization of normalization you can think of this way also it's a process of organizing a database to reduce redundancy and improve integrity by breaking relations into smaller more manageable tables while maintaining the relationship so relationship is very important so with the help of relationship you have to take a natural join and you have to recover the original data also so original data in any case it should not be lost simple example of decomposition as abc is there then you can decompose into this kind of a relation just to manage and organize data effectively right and this is the summary uh, here you can see one nf two conditions are there no multi valued attribute no composite attribute two nf should be in one nf this is the first condition and the major part is that partial dependency so second nf always remember with the name partial dependency what about the third nf third nf obviously it should be in two nf because it's a uh, sequential order and there should be no transitive dependency there should be no transitive dependency the final one is what the bcnf relation should be in 3nf obviously and then last time you always remember determinants what are determinants that determine something must always be the super keys so obviously if they are super key then they are keys or then they are candidate keys also okay students thank you for your participation